Hello guys, in this video we are going to talk about histogram specification. So basically we are going to see how can we program MATLAB to uh, do our histogram specification. So basically to get a quiet recap, so uh, please watch my video on motivation for histogram specification. I have uh, talked about how uh, histogram specification came and why it is the way it is so here we saw some of the steps of histogram specific specification so here basically you have two images uh, there is one image whose histogram is basically required so this is the required histogram and there is one image that is to be modified so basically we have this given image so it is a dark sort of image and i want to do some image processing on it some histogram processing on this so that i can make the histogram of this image like this so like the histogram of the uh, required uh, histogram basically so i want to convert this histogram to this histogram this is my task basically so for that we have seen uh, how does this work we'll just discuss the steps and the matlab code so first first step is basically to e equalize both the images so let us see so clc clear close that is all we know uh, i am read so basically i am reading the image given image over here so this is the image to be modified basically so this is that i am reading over here next uh, since this is a color image so i am first converting into grayscale uh, so that is uh, because of this so rgb to gray is the function which converts the color image to grayscale i'll take this size i'll convert it to double next now this is a loop for getting the histogram of the image so we have discussed this particular loop in my video that is uh, histogram uh, first video on histogram in MATLAB basically so shifting and scaling of histogram there I have uh, talked about how to uh, get an histogram of the image so basically we are all using uh, not using the inbuilt MATLAB functions so I am uh, we are doing everything ourselves so that is so please take the logic uh, if in case you have not seen the video I'll put that link in the description below please take the logic from there next now uh, as the first step was equalize to equalize the image so uh, these are the steps for equalizing you first need to take the pdf you then generate the cdf out of the pdf and then you do some uh, some processing basically so it is just this is uh, the code for generating the cdf out of the pdf then you round up the cdf multiply it by 255 and you uh, get the cdf basically over here next uh, i am reading the other image so basically here uh, it is not important to equalize the whole image it is important to get the cdf this is what we actually need so we have the cdf of the given uh, given image to be modified that is over here next uh, you read the image which has the required histogram so this is the image that has the required histogram and I'm doing uh, almost the same steps uh, that I've done above. So RGB to gray size double. This is the loop for getting the histogram. You take the PDF from the histogram. Uh, you define the CDF and get the CDF from PDF. So basically these things I've explained in my previous video that is on histogram equalization so in case if you have not seen that video please do see that video so that will be is covered over there basically so next i get the cdf1 now cdf1 is the cdf of this uh, new image so the required histogram has a cdf cdf1 and the given image has a cdf as the cdf basically so this is the cdf of the given image and CDF1 is the CDF of the required histogram image. Right. So, I, so here basically what we do is we equate both of them. So, we can see that after equalizing. So, I have not uh, actually 
uh, done this because the 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 main instance is over here we we, we do this so g of z is basically the cdf of z because i have talked about in the transformation function that uh, cdf is the transformation function for uh, histogram equalization so this g of z is nothing but a transformation on z and t of r is transformation on r so this is cdf of z this is cdf of r so i just need to compare both of these cdf and i have my job done i have i had given these images in my uh, video because i wanted to show why s is equal to k basically so this is the theory behind and uh, practically we don't actually need to equalize we just uh, need to need both of their cdfs and compare them so that is what we have got over here we have got cdf of the required histogram and cdf of the given histogram that is what we have got now comes the main uh, histogram specification thing that is basically in this loop so basically to um, understand this better let us uh, let us do something so this is the 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 loop this is the loop basically that i had uh, pasted over there so let us see what is this loop actually doing so this i have uh, taken an example so basically this is the same example that i have taken in my sum uh, so i've i've done a sum on histogram specification uh, if in case uh, you have not seen that video so you please go through that so you'll understand how manually uh, we can do histogram specification so here this is the loop so basically the first loop the first for loop is for k is equal to 1 to 256 so this for this k this takes care of the uh, basically given image so the given image is this t of r so uh, uh, given image is basically represented by r so t of r is cdf of uh, r so this is the uh, given image we have seen that is t right doesn't matter okay so this is the given image cdf so this is what i've got 750 these these are okay here i've taken a 3 bit image so hence the numbers go from 1 to 8 Achha, these are not the grayscale uh, values these are the index so a cdf will have 750 now matlab has uh, the matlab indices start from 1 so 1 2 3 hence there is 1 so these are not grayscale values these are uh, the matlab indexes so the grayscale corresponding to this is actually 0 the grayscale corresponding to this is 1 to this is 2 and the story right so this is the cdf of given image similarly this is the cdf of the uh, image whose histogram we have to uh, which is required so we have to uh, this is this is the required histogram basically so what we actually do is this we want g of z greater than or equal to t of r because we see that in discrete cases we don't get this equal to t of r which is what is actually desired so this is not that we get in actual cases so we then uh, set a condition let g of z be greater than or equal to t of r so what is this particular loop doing so this k is accounting for values in cdf so for k from 1 to 256 now my real practical life image has 256 levels hence this is going from 1 to 256 so here it will go from 1 to 8 basically for my this small problem now there is this loop that is tracing k1 now what is k1 k1 is basically uh, here it will trace the values of uh, the required histogram so k1 is tracing the values of this histogram so at first k will be 1 so so your cdf of k means it is pointing to this cdf of 1 so it is pointing here so cdf of k is basically 750 cdf of k is 750 so it is checking whether so k is 1 and for first time k1 is also 1 so we have k is equal to 1 k1 is equal to 1 so it will check cdf1 of k1 so both k and k1 are 1 
So CDF of 1 that is 750 will be compared with CDF of K1 that is 0. So it says is 750 less than 0? Is 750 less than 0? The answer is no. So it will not do anything. It will again come over here. Now K1 value will be 2 because this is the inner loop. This will first get executed. So K1 value will be 2. So now K1 is here. So it is comparing. Is still K is 1. So it is comparing. Is K less than 0? So basically is this 750 less than 0? So it is still not less than 0. Hence it will again not do anything and go back here. Now K1 will be 3. So it is pointing here. CDF1 of K1 it is pointing here. So now it is asking is uh, 750 less than 0 so again the answer is no nothing will happen it will come here it will go to 4 so it will go to 614 so cdf1 so k1 is 4 so cdf1 of 4 is 614 it asks is 750 less than 614 the answer is still no so again this will go to here k1 will get update it will get 5 so k1 will be 5 cdf1 of 5 is 1433 it'll ask is 750 greater than one uh, less than 1433 and the answer is yes so here 750 is less than 1433 so what will happen this is this is the match that we have got so i am assigning this this is my transformation function dk so what dk will do so dk so basically here is k is 1 for this iteration k is 1 and what did we get the value of k1 over here that is 5 so d of 1 will be 5 so like this i'm sorry so like this we are getting our uh, transformation matrix so next uh, and uh, also here i have done a break so as soon as i get the lowest match i come out of the this uh, inner for loop and then my k value becomes 2 because i have assigned this this is done so now k value will be 2 now k is 2 it again starts from uh, k1 so it will again compare all these 1 2 3 4 5 6 and we will get a match at 6 because we see 1 7 7 3 is less than 2 6 6 3 so then dk is equal to k1 so now k is equal to 2 so at the two place we will get six also note i am putting k1 i am not putting cdf1 of k1 hence this value will not come it is the index that will come so here i'll get six and in this way i can complete my transformation matrix so this was the important thing that we are doing in uh, histogram specification so for any histogram operation the transformation matrix is the most important thing so uh, also in the pbd i have shown that uh, here we take the g inverse so basically this this thing is comparing these and then the transformation matrix is basically accounting for that g inverse term so basically the transformation this thing this particular thing is been taken care of by this transformation function so by this way we can uh, uh, get the uh, transformation matrix so that is what i have done uh, over here so this is the most important code for histogram specification that we have so after we got the uh, transformation matrix things are very simple so now you just you you know how if you have a transformation matrix how to generate the output image so this also i have uh, talked about in my uh, first video on histogram processing that is shifting and scaling so uh, please look uh, in that video if in case uh, you have not seen the video so that i've talked about over there so after you get uh, the output image you can generate the histogram of the output image to compare if the histograms are actually similar or not and then plot uh, plot the images as you want so basically these are just the plotting functions to show uh, what all results we get 
so let us run the program and see what results we get all right so okay so let let us let us first see this image this is an important right so here you can see this was the uh, image whose histogram we had to copy so you can see that this was our given image to be modified you can see how beautifully it has copied the uh, histogram of the uh, required image so here you can see yes this is not a perfect copy uh, this perfect copy will not happen because these are discrete levels so if in case both of these would be continuous then there would be a perfect uh, copy of the histogram but since this is a discrete case we don't get a perfect copy but you get a quite similar copy so you can see initially the histogram of this image was something like this and it was a dark image basically but after uh, this histogram specification we saw that it has converted to this so here you can see that the image is enhanced to a nice value so here uh, this is quite dark but then here you can see it is quite bright we saw all the features that uh, why this is nice so we 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 had applied the histogram uh, equalization on this image if you if you remember in my his motivation for histogram specification here so here we could see there was this quality was not that nice there were patches seen and and so on so therefore uh, see here we, we did not like this image a lot so then we went to histogram uh, specification and then we got uh, this particular image which is quite relatively good so that was the main purpose of histogram specification i hope you understood this uh, this particular application or uh, and the program and uh, in my next video i am basically going to upload the color histogram processing so basically what how can you process the histogram of color images so that is what i am going to take up next so see you in my next video thank you so much for watching thank you so much